When we see the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared, of course we know the answer for this is just equal to inverse tangent of x plus c. And if you want to show work, of course we can just do tricks up, let x equal to tangent theta, and then we can continue from here. And this is usually done in Cal 2. But last time I also showed you guys how we can use complex numbers to do this. And that is to factor 1 plus x squared as i plus x times negative i plus x. And then do partial fractions in the complex world. But I did that for you guys last time already. So if you haven't seen that video, go ahead and watch that after this video. The link will be in the description for your convenience. So what exactly are we doing here today? Well, don't worry. I'm going to square the denominator. Easy, right? Because we can just square this. No, of course not. Don't do that. The question is, can we still do tricks up? The answer for that is yes. Can we do this? Also yes. But in fact, we are not going to do this anymore. Instead, I will show you guys a very powerful technique for integration, and that's called the famous technique of integration, aka differentiation under the integral sign, aka Leibniz rule for integration. So how exactly do we do it though? Well, first, we have to start with something that we know. So check this out. But what if this number is not 1, let's say it's 17? Well, in that case, what do we do on the right-hand side, right? So as you can see, this formula is not so complete yet, but instead, this formula is better. That is when we have an a squared right here. When we have that, the right-hand side is going to be 1 over a times the inverse tangent of x over a. And you can do tricks up for this as well. So I'm going to leave that to you guys. I'm just going to use this formula to show you. This a is called the parameter because it kind of generates like the all the complete version of this formula for you guys, right? Hmm, so how exactly can we utilize this though? Feynman is going to tell us that whenever you have a formula with parameter, just go ahead and differentiate that with respect to the parameter and hope for the good things to happen. And it will happen, trust me. He didn't say that, but I made that up. So let's go ahead and check that out. I'm just going to differentiate this with respect to a, like so. Well, on the left-hand side, we are differentiating an integral. So what do we do? Well, this is the time that we have to use the so-called differentiation under the integral sign that tells us that we can bring this inside but change the d to the partial derivative symbol because we have the a and also the x inside here. So this left-hand side becomes the integral and then partial derivative. And right here, to differentiate that, let's just go ahead and write this as a squared plus x squared raised to a negative 1. And we still have the dx. On the right-hand side, I'm just going to keep it as, take the derivative, and we have this right here, so it's the 1 over a. But this right here will be our first function, because a is the variable here. And then times the inverse tangent of x over a, and of course, put a plus c right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and work out the derivative. For this, use the power rule first. So bring the power to the front, and then minus 1. So we have negative a squared plus x squared raised to the negative 2. But don't forget the chain rule. Multiply by the derivative inside with respect to a, so that is just going to be 2a. The derivative x squared is 0 because we are in the a world. So that's the derivative from the inside, but we still have the integral. So go ahead, put down the integral right here. Aha, I see some of you guys see what we are doing. On the right-hand side, if we can figure out the derivative, we pretty much will have the formula. Well, we will have to use the product rule. We are going to keep the first function, which is 1 over a, times the derivative inverse tangent. It will give us 1 over 1 plus whatever this is, and square, so x over a, square. That's not yet, though. We will have to use the chain rule. So x is just a constant multiple in the a world, so let's put that down and then differentiating 1 over a, write that as a to the negative 1, we'll get negative a to the negative 2, so it's just negative 1 over a squared. Good. And then we will continue, keep the second function, so plus inverse tangent of x over a, times the derivative of that, which is negative 1 over a squared. Derivative c, 
is just zero. Can we differentiate both sides with respect to C? Don't do that. You could, but why? Yeah, anyway though, that's pretty much it. Now we just start to clean things up. So on the left hand side, let me just put this down as the integral negative 2a over, and then here I'll write this as a squared plus x squared and then squared. Aha! And then dA, this right here. To clean this up, okay, we have an invisible parentheses on the bottom here. I'm just going to take the a squared, multiplying, multiplying. On the top, we have negative 1 times x, so that's negative x over. This a is just chilling at the front right here. This times that is a squared, this times that is x squared, so that's the first part. And for the second part, we'll just say minus 1 over a squared times inverse tangent of x over a. Yeah. We're pretty much done, but I would like to divide everybody by 2a here so that uh, it's cleaner, I'll say. So let's go ahead. Oh, sorry, it should be a negative right here, negative 2a. So let's divide everybody by negative 2a. So 1 over negative 2a. So finally, integral 1 over a squared plus x squared and then squared dx. No partial fraction, no tricks up. Yeah differentiation under the integral sign. Give us that negative negative becomes positive. We have just x on the top over 2 a squared times a squared plus x squared and then negative negative becomes positive 1 over 2 a to the third power and then inverse tangent of x over a. Wow, how cool is this, right? And because we are talking about formula, and this is the independent integral. So at the end here, I will put down plus c. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a very nice formula for you guys with this approach. And of course, we should finish this question, right? So this and that is just when the case a is equal to 1. Can you put negative 1? Yes. Ah, interesting. But why? That will give us neg oh, negative, negative, some positive. So one's okay. So I'm just going to say let a equal to one. So that's that. And then on the right hand side, we'll just have x over two, and then one plus x squared, and then right here just one over two, and we have inverse tangent of x over a, which is just over one. So we have this, and finally put a plus c. Just like that. So, what do you guys think? Cool, huh? Hey, I hope you liked the video so far. And if you enjoy problem solving and want to learn more, then you should check out our sponsor today, Brilliant. Brilliant is an excellent online learning platform with a big focus on interactive learning. This is from the Algorithm Fundamentals course, which is one of the things I wish to know when I was a student. After going over this course, you will be able to know the methods to measure and compare performance, and you will be able to learn all the fundamental problems in algorithm. I can tell you taking a course from Brilliant is really really fun because they will always keep you engaged by storytelling and beautiful animations. And the best part is, if you use the link in the description, brilliant.org slash blackpenredpen, then you can get 20% off discount. I want to thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video, and I also want to thank you guys for checking them out.